Hello everyone and welcome to today's webcast on analytics in the cloud with Azure ML. Um, my name is Andrew Kennedy. I'm a business intelligence and analytics consultant here at Thorogood. Uh, and I'm joining the webcast from Thorogood's London office. Uh, and with me uh, today is my colleague Scott Styritz, who's joining from our Philadelphia office. And you can also use uh, the contact details that I'm showing on the screen if you want to get in touch with us for a more in-depth discussion about any of today's topics. Now on today's webcast, uh, we're going to look uh, at a few different objectives. We'll start by introducing Azure ML. Uh, then we'll look at how it can be used to build and scale analytics workflows. And then finally, we'll explore how you can share analytics outputs uh, across your organization using uh, some of the tools made available in Azure Machine Learning. Now, before I get into the topic, uh, for any of those, uh, for anyone on the call who doesn't know Thorogood, we are an independent professional services firm with 30 years of experience delivering business intelligence and analytics strategies, solutions, and services, all with a keen focus on our customers' specific needs. Uh, we're a global company with offices in New York, Philadelphia, London, Bangalore, Singapore, and Sao Paulo, and all of our consultants globally are recruited and trained in the same way to develop a unique mix of skills, blending business understanding in the form of industry and functional experience with strong technical aptitude and a deep understanding of analytical tools and techniques. And we offer a full range of BI and analytics services, including strategy and roadmaps, requirements, design, implementation, and training and support. We do all of that for clients uh, typically across four data-rich verticals. Uh, it's consumer goods, pharmaceutical and health services, banking and insurance. And our clients are some of the leading organizations in these sectors. But we take a lot of pride in the long-standing relationships that we've fostered with some of the names you can see on the screen now. In terms of the technologies we work with, uh, we are an independent consulting firm, which means that we don't specialize in, in one specific technology. Rather, uh, we work and we partner across a range of key players in the market in order to provide our clients with a solution that, that best suits their needs, uh, built on the best in breed technologies that you can see on the screen. Now, today's call is specifically uh, focusing on a Microsoft technology, so I want to spend a minute or two talking about our relationship with Microsoft. We've been a gold partner for over 15 years. Uh, we're certified for data platform, data analytics, and cloud platform. And our partnership gives us a great interface into the Microsoft development team. And that allows for open communication uh, from Microsoft to our customers, and also we take feedback from our customers and we can give that to the developers who are working on the technologies. If you're interested in working with us on any of the innovation programs listed on the screen, uh, or you're interested in progressing a Microsoft initiative, uh, please reach out and let us know. So getting on to the specific topic of today's call, I'm going to start by introducing Azure ML, and then I'll take a look at how you can use that in shaping your analytics, uh, and then I'll hand over to Scott to talk a little bit more about integrating analytics and, and talk about what your next steps might be. To place Azure Machine Learning in context, uh, I'll start with a list of some of the more commonly used applications on the Microsoft Azure Cloud platform. Now, as seen from this catalog, the list of services spans many topics, uh, such as management, storage, and analytics, to name just a few. Today, we're going to be focusing on the analytics section, and specifically, we're going to take a look at Azure Machine Learning, focusing primarily on Azure ML Studio, and also touching on how you can use Azure ML to publish web services uh, that can consume machine learning model outputs in your end user applications. So what are, the, what are some of the features of machine, Azure Machine Learning? Uh, first off, it's a fully managed service in the cloud. Uh, there's also a free version uh, so that you only require a Microsoft account ID to get started right away. Secondly, there's a drag and drop interface in Studio to allow you to connect to data and create workflows. And if you want to model with data that's not in the cloud already, uh, you can do that by simply uploading a data set from your on-premises uh, data source into the built-in storage space within Azure ML. The only data that you need to have in the cloud is the data that's needed to train the model. Once the model then is published as a web service, uh, it can be run across any data source um, and set up to run anywhere. Now, it's very flexible. For users who don't want to write code, Machine Learning Studio comes with a number of built-in models uh, covering a range of use cases, and you can simply drag and drop those into an advanced analytics workflow. And we'll show more of that later. For more experienced implementers, you can also add custom R code, uh, as well as using one of over 350 R packages that are built into Azure Machine Learning. And essentially, the use of Azure ML can be as simple or as complex as your current skill level and your business needs require. You can also deploy a model as a web service within minutes, um, and that allows you to link up a web service to a company dashboard or Power BI or any custom application that you have for whatever way your user needs to interact with the outputs of the model. Now, within the Azure Machine Learning Suite, there are a number of different components, um, and I want to call out two today that I think you should be looking at. The first is Azure Machine Learning Studio, uh, and that's the low-code environment that I was talking about uh, with those built-in models that users can drag and drop to create advanced analytics flows. 
Within those flows, you might start by importing some data, maybe do a few steps, uh, some simple data shaping, and then train and optimize the model uh, on the data that you've got in place. That whole machine learning studio interface is entirely kind of serverless, if you like. It's accessed through the browser, uh, so there's no installation needed. It allows for drag and drop development. Um, and, and an entirely code-free code and intuitive experimentation uh, service if that's what you're looking for. Once you've built a model that you're happy with, it also allows you to deploy web services in minutes. Um, and Scott's going to show some of that later on. Also separate to that then, you have the Azure Machine Learning Service. And that's somewhere that you can build and train machine learning models uh, faster than you could on your own machine. Uh, it's designed to easily deploy models to the cloud as well with the Azure Machine Learning Service. and it allows you to use the latest open source technologies such as TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, to get the advantage of cutting edge technology. The whole approach with that is to experiment locally and then quickly scale up or out in a way that, that will be common uh, across a lot of the, uh, the different Azure technologies. And it allows you to track your experiments, manage models, and easily deploy the models with integrated uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment tooling. In addition to what I've already mentioned on the Azure Machine Learning Service, in the last, the last number of weeks, Microsoft have announced automated machine learning, uh, or automated ML it's sometimes called, which will allow you to automatically create and train a machine learning model using various inputs and all the power of Azure ML Service. Now, Azure Machine Learning Service, and in particular the automated machine learning, uh, are compelling for a, a number of reasons. Uh, we're not going to go into that in as much detail today, uh, but if you're interested in that, get in touch or keep an eye out for a future webcast in which we'll cover some of those uh, capabilities in greater detail. Now, to get started in looking into uh, Azure Machine Learning, and in particular Machine Learning Studio, uh, I'm going to take a look at, at shaping analytics and why a tool like Azure ML is helpful. And to do that, I want to consider a, a common approach uh, to data science and analytics. That's the CRISP-DM model. And in fact, this is an approach that we use uh, regularly here at Thorogood. Uh, we do that for a number of reasons. There are a number of reasons that we really like this approach. The first of those is that it recognizes uh, the importance of starting by looking at the business goals and at the same time looking at how the data might support analytics that delivers real business value by improving decision making in line with those business objectives that you've identified. Once those objectives are set, uh, it highlights the iterative nature of the data preparation and modeling process. Uh, it, it's very unlikely in this kind of uh, advanced analytics approach that you're going to find the optimal model first time. Uh, and it's important to consider how uh, the choice of data you're using and the way that it's prepared uh, feeds into that loop uh, between data preparation and modeling uh, to get the best model output. There's also an important evaluation step uh, where you take the final model and you need to review that against the business objectives that you identified at the start. And it might be necessary at that point to go back and review the model again, um, or even reconsider some of the questions that you've been asking. But at the end, uh, you should arrive at a model that gives you insight into how you can improve the decisions being made in the business. And the deployment step is key in communicating the outputs to users so that they can make decisions based on up-to-date information and that takes into account the latest data available in an automated, repeatable manner. And so considering that approach uh, and a number of the, the analytics projects that we've seen in general, uh, we see a number of, of challenges, common challenges, common uh, characteristics that arise in those problems. And we, I've called out three here. Uh, I've, I've kind of talked briefly about the numerous iterations. Uh, we all see large volumes of data and ever-increasing volumes of data and some very resource-intensive analysis um, coming out of that large data volume, uh, but also some of the types of advanced analysis that you want to perform on that data. So let's take a look at how Azure ML can help um, shape the analytics, uh, and in particular help with each of those challenges. First off, with the numerous iterations, uh, if you've ever created analytical algorithms or statistical models before, uh, you'll be very familiar with not getting it right first time every time. Um, and an approach like this, um, you need tools that will help you move as quickly as you can. Now in Azure ML Studio, uh, we've seen the we've talked about the intuitive drag and drop experimentation interface, and that's something that you can easily make changes to the models as you're going through. Um, in the service, uh, again, I've talked about the continuous integration, continuous development tools. Uh, so all of this is designed to keep your analysis uh, in a state where you can make changes to it, make tweaks, and then rerun it to, to see uh, how the changes that you're making affect the final model. All of the Azure Machine Learning tools are built on the, the cloud architecture that comes with Azure, and that's allowing you to scale things up to the size that you need, uh, to store the data, and then, and then scale it back down again if, you're, if you don't need those data volumes. 
again with a resource intensive uh, analysis, same thing happens. You have that flexible pool of resources that you can pull on. Um, storing and operating on as big a data set as you need with as complex an analysis as you need, but only paying for what you're using. So when you no longer need it, you can scale it back down um, and stop using that computation power and stop paying for that computation power, importantly. Now, of course, the approach we've shown isn't the only approach to analytics, but that's something that we see um, across a lot of our analytics projects, and e even these challenges will exist um, across a lot of those projects. Um, and so this is these tools really help a data scientist or data scientist team uh, to be able to scale and to operate effectively. So I've looked at shaping analytics. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Scott now to talk a little bit more um, about integrating that analytics into your organization. So as Andrew mentioned, um, you know, I'm going to talk about integrating analytics into your business. So in order to really understand uh, what, what we even mean by integrating analytics, let's look at a diagram of how this might come together you know, within a real organization. So as Andrew's already taken us through, uh, data scientists or other analysts can use the, the low barrier to entry and intuitiveness or, of Azure ML Studio, or the robustness and power of automated ML, or maybe the flexibility of Azure ML Service to shape and define uh, your models that describe the behavior of certain business processes. And although these models bring a lot of potential value to the business, they really don't mean anything uh, until they're integrated into new or maybe existing business processes. So each of these methods for shaping models comes closely aligned to a simple process for deploying as a web service, which essentially means packaging up the model and exposing it as an API or an interface with you know, defined inputs and outputs that uses a widely accepted format. And this allows uh, many other systems to communicate with the model. Then you have data that's already incorporated uh, into your business. It could be in dashboards, it could be in some data sources, it could be in other applications that you use. Uh, and it can be sent through these apps to the web service. Uh, the data can be scored by the analytical model and then returned back to these same applications. And this allows seamless integration of the newly generated insightful data that you're getting out of your model uh, back with the important contextual data that the business is already used to seeing within all of those sources or dashboards or applications. So why does a tool like Azure ML play such a valuable role here? Well, the first reason it's so valuable is, uh, as, as Andrew started to touch on, scalability. So when we're starting off with some experimentation, um, and that, you know, that, that flexibility is nice, but when we productionize, we'll really start to see demand uh, on these models that we come up with scaling up. Maybe we'll have hundreds of people across our business trying to access uh, potentially pretty compute-intensive models at the same time. Or maybe we have some client applications that are looking to automatically score millions of records per day or even per hour, you know, just meaning huge quantities of, of hits on these web services. Uh, so because it's a cloud-based platform, we're really abstracted from the reliance on maintaining these, this massive amount of hardware that's needed to support the initiatives. And as the demand for web services increases, using this fully managed solution means we can rapidly scale our capacity alongside that demand. Then we can also consider where or when we don't need quite as much availability, which means, uh, of course, a lower barrier to entry for getting started. Another great benefit uh, to Azure ML is security. So it offers separation of our analytical models and underlying data. So it's sort of like a, sort of like a BYOB. Uh, you know, the web service doesn't need to check everyone's ID to manage access to the data because it doesn't inherently connect to the data. You yourself need to bring that data and provide it to the web service as an input. We've also seen some challenges with some other solutions that we've seen. Uh, that, that don't allow very granular segmentation of users, meaning redundant infrastructure that's set up where this segmentation is needed. With Azure ML, on the other hand, um, you know, the tool can be integrated into multiple areas of the business at once without this security holdup due to maintaining access at the individual web service level. Another major benefit is consistency. So what happens when you have one set of forecasts for your data? And you know, I'm over in another section of the business, I create my own forecasts, and what we're looking at tell completely different stories. Well, integrating a tool like Azure ML into your business processes means integrating a central repository for your analytical models. So the same valuable insights that you're getting can be shared by others throughout the business. 
And lastly, I definitely want to talk about flexibility. Uh, so, you know, it's built with this web service architecture in mind, and, uh, and web service architecture is, is, you know, already set up uh, to be integrated into your existing applications. So anything that can communicate back and forth with APIs will be able to make use of these web services. And there's also some flexibility in the type of web services available. Uh, you know, we can score via synchronous calls to the web service or via batch processing, uh, sort of whatever the, um, whatever the end application needs, uh, Azure ML will be able to handle it. So now that we have an understanding of why Azure ML can help us with shaping and integrating analytics, let's dive in into, a, into an example of an implementation of this architecture, uh, primarily using Azure ML Studio. So uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm, a, you know, I'm an analyst at a consumer goods company. And we sell a number of different food products as well as some other consumer goods you might find in a grocery store or convenience stores. Uh, and our business does primarily indirect sales, so selling to distributors who then sell to stores. Uh, but our direct sales business, where we're selling directly to stores, has been increasing a lot recently. And we're looking to better understand our customers in order to think about you know, discounts or contract negotiations, uh, advertising campaigns that we may want to run, that sort of thing. So now I will pull up a data set that I have available. So now, now I have this data set available uh, as far as my monthly sales to some of my customers. And that's split out by, uh, by category of our products. So we have you know, some uh, fresh products. We have uh, milk, grocery, frozen foods. Uh, we have some non-food products like some detergents, some paper products, and uh, some deli products as well. And uh, we have also some information about the customer type, uh, so whether it's direct or indirect sales. As I mentioned, we're, we're primarily going to be looking at direct sales here. Uh, and then we also have some information about those specific customers. So the challenge for my company has been, you know, we've, it, it's previously seemed like a massive investment to get started with integrating data, scientists, data science into our organization. And we need something pretty fast and flexible uh, so that it can support rapid exploration and experimentation, but also be robust enough that we can quickly productionize something as we deliver value. In some of our previous attempts, there was, you know, there was too high of a barrier to entry, or, um, or where there was a relatively low barrier to entry, it wasn't robust enough to share those results and build buy-in and ownership across the business. So as far as my objective, when I'm looking at this data, uh, it's, it's pretty difficult without knowing each specific customer in detail to understand what our customers look like uh, in general. You know, as, as you can see here, there's really too much data. It's too granular to manually look at this and understand what our customers behave like. What are, what are they like at a higher level? Whereas this exact higher level understanding is what we need to drive future decisions on advertising or marketing, commercial terms, that sort of thing. So we want to use some data science techniques to cluster our data points into groupings of customers that behave similarly. So for those techniques, that's where we're using Azure ML Studio. So as you can see here, there's a, a relatively uh, basic setup to get started with the cluster analysis. And as I mentioned, we're interested in looking at our direct sales, so I've you know, SQL transformation to filter out some of that indirect sales data. Uh, we're also filtering out that customer type column and some information about the customers. So, uh, you know, I have this transformation where I'm selecting specific columns and then uh, applying k-means clustering, uh, which is essentially just looking for relationships uh, within the records of our data to find records that, you know, although we don't have a strict definition for what we're looking for, uh, it'll help to draw out similarities uh, among that data. So since I'm still in the exploratory phase, I'm using this sweet clustering module to tune and optimize the hyperparameters of the algorithm. So this means like starting number of clusters, starting seed, that sort of thing. Uh, since I haven't had a ton of time to experiment, this will iterate through a lot of those options and pull out a best model for me to use. I also have this uh, convert to CSV final uh, module here. So what I could do is, uh, is go into this and download my results, meaning all the data that I inputted, I'll have those, those outputted clusters and the assignment of, of this data to that cluster, which is great. Uh, but what happens as we continue to collect data uh, about our customers, when we get new customers, where we 
you know, we probably started this on a, on a sample data set, but as we expand to new areas of the business, uh, how do we incorporate this? So this is why Azure ML is so valuable. It's not only flexible and very quick to get started with machine learning, but it also has the ability to quickly scale and integrate these insights into applications across, that business, across our business. So how do we integrate? Well, first thing I'm going to do is set up a predictive service. That's an option down at the bottom here. Uh, and I'll click that, and you know, in just a couple seconds, it'll package up that creation of the model, and it'll include a couple extra modules like the web service input. Let me close out these. The web service input, which you know, just defines the inputs to our API, and the web service output. Uh, it, it starts the web service input up here above some of these transformations. But if you think about it, we wouldn't want to build in like filtering out rows, selecting columns, that sort of thing into the web service. That would probably be pre-work that we would do uh, ahead of sending data to the web service in the first place. So I'll just take this uh, and drag the web service input um, directly to assign data to clusters. So this is another module that's automatically created uh, that just takes the optimized model that we have, this optimized uh, clustering model, and assigns it to all of our new data coming in. And then lastly, uh, I'll drag on this select columns in data set module and redirect the output of assigned data to clusters and back to the web service output. And the reason I'm doing this is, um, well, let me run this first. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is when I, uh, when I like, get the results from this analysis, it'll return not only the results themselves, uh, but also it'll return like uh, some metadata information, it'll return all my input data. And when I'm setting up the API and incorporating that into other applications, that's probably not necessary for me to do. Um, so I'll cut out all that excess information uh, and uh, only select the output column uh, that I want. So just this assignment column that contains the actual cluster. Run it again. Uh, just so I'm ready to deploy this. And then as soon as that completes, uh, we'll see down here that I can click to deploy the web service. So, so you can see, you know, it's probably less than, than 10 clicks total to go from uh, just developing my model until having an actual API that's available uh, for me to hit. And what I also have is uh, an Excel application here uh, where I, you know, just built out some some sample data for what a couple of example customers look, might look like, uh, and this is connected to my API already. So, you know, maybe it's a, a small local grocery store uh, that does some grocery sales, some uh, fresh fruits, food sales, they have a small deli, uh, versus a large chain grocery store, a lot bigger uh, sales per month, larger deli, and then maybe like a convenience and pharmacy uh, store that has some groceries are uh, pretty limited. They have uh, a little bit more focus on those, you know, those non-food products. Uh, so I can take this and go and select my input range as all those inputs to the web service. And then I'll just direct my output to cell H1. Uh, and then go and predict my data. And already, you know, in, in a couple clicks, it returns the assignments to clusters. So then I can kind of start to understand using some of these examples what those clusters look like uh, and how some of my customers might roll up into those clusters. So as far as what we saw during that demo, again, I was a, an analyst at a consumer goods company uh, looking to better understand our customer base, and we pretty rapidly arrived at value through the, uh, the model development in Azure ML Studio, and then continued to share that value by deploying as a web service in a few clicks and even integrating into a client application. So what are some next steps? Well, you know, I could continue with the deeper analysis of customers. Uh, I could apply the gained understanding to start building out models uh, that focus on financial value. You know, it could be uh, optimizing some of our advertising campaigns or optimizing some other processes. And I can also look at integrating this model into other existing business applications. That way, you know, these results are sitting alongside our business's data. So, so to you know, kind of wrap up here, um, in terms of getting started with Azure ML, there are a number of places 
uh, you know, that you would want to put some consideration, and these are all areas that we can help. Uh, so business visioning, you know, how, um, although you may have the tools to, to answer these questions, what are the valuable questions that your business is really looking for? Uh, we can also help with data preparation, as that's a, a pretty big focus of the CRISPR model, the actual statistical modeling, and then implementation, uh, including you know, integration of these solutions into your applications. And another thing to, to note is that what we've looked at today was primarily focused on tools. Uh, so you know, we looked at um, Azure ML Studio, we talked a bit about automated ML and uh, the Azure ML service. But this is really only one piece of the puzzle. You know, first of all, there's likely to be more tools within your business, and you know, Azure ML needs to integrate across those tools. Data also needs to be readily available, and you know, as data volumes increase, uh, it becomes more and more challenging to manage and prepare and store that data. And then the people need to be trained and supported uh, in modeling and consuming the analytics. So you know, it's great that you can drag and drop uh, analytics in Azure ML, but you know, unless, unless your people have the understanding of what that really means, uh, then it's pretty difficult to get value out of that. So there's, there's quite a bit of focus on people. And then lastly, uh, business processes need to be in place to enable this innovation and allow uh, some of the adaptation with change. And lastly, we've kind of talked about several different topics uh, today, most of which are available in much more detail on our website, whereas on-demand webcast recordings, blogs, or white papers. So specifically, I'd like to call out uh, three. You know, we have, we have uh, information about the latest Microsoft BI trends, so uh, getting to understand some of the offerings from Microsoft in a bit more detail. Um, we have a blog about uh, Databricks for Advanced Analytics, which is another one of the uh, offerings in Azure, as well as a webcast on Power Apps. So if any of these topics interest you or if you have questions about these, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. And lastly, if you found today's webcast helpful, uh, we do, like I said, have some on-demand content available on our website. We have several upcoming webcasts, and I've just included links to those uh, on the screen. So thank you very much for joining today. Have a nice day.